Does the SEC versus Rebel case create a sound template for crypto regulation? We'll take a look at the so-called Ripple Roadmap and how the future might be shaped by this very important legal case. And we'll also take a deeper dive at some of the Ripple effects, pun intended, around this, this groundbreaking case and how the SEC's influence and power might be limited as it pertains to digital assets. All that and more, but if we haven't met before, my name's Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. Okay, we're going to dive into two documents that just came out in the last week or so. This one from earlier today by J.W. Verrett, who we're pretty familiar with. He's sounded off multiple times on the SEC versus Ripple case. And this piece is called A Sound Template for Crypto Regulation. This has to do with what the SEC versus Ripple case might uh, provide as it pertains to clarity uh, in the crypto space from a litigation standpoint, especially as you have other crypto entities perhaps facing off against the SEC in court. He writes, last few months have seen a seismic shift in the crypto industry, putting the SEC squarely in the hot seat. The agency seems to have taken the wrong regulatory approach at every possible juncture, cozying up to fraudster Sam Bankman fried while excoriating crypto innovators, and companies that seek to do business lawfully in the U.S. We've seen the cases of the SEC versus Library, SEC versus Ripple, Grayscale versus the SEC, and others that the commission's overriding desire to protect entrenched political interests instead of consumers facilitated the demise of well-intentioned companies, the loss of hundreds of millions of dollars of consumers' as wealth, and massive fraud going unchecked like at FTX. The courts have attempted Attempted to right the ship, pushing back on the SEC's arbitrary and capricious rejection of its Bitcoin ETF in issuing a legally sound victory for Ripple on core legal questions and the SEC's lawsuit against the payments company. In fact, the Ripple decision from Judge Torres of the Southern District of New York could be considered a roadmap for other crypto companies because she carefully laid out how and why the facts and circumstances of cryptocurrency offers and sales matter under existing securities laws. And this is important because the SEC treats it as though it doesn't matter when in fact it does. The SEC seeks to take Howie, stretch it past its limits, and apply it to anything that they deem might be a securities transaction, whereas the courts have presented something different entirely. At its heart, this Ripple roadmap recognizes the nuances of how unique digital assets and their trading can be while still applying existing securities law dating back to the 1946 Howey case where the Supreme Court defined what makes a security. The SEC tried to circumvent a strict application of the Howey test by arguing an alternative fact without citing any case law to support it. The XRP token itself, the SEC argued, is a digital asset security by its very nature, and all sales, therefore, met the Howey test as investment contracts in Ripple. The commission, therefore, had indiscriminate power to regulate it wherever and whoever bought or sold it, no matter what those facts and circumstances might be. But Judge Torres reaffirmed that even with this new technology, facts and circumstances around specific offers and sales are highly relevant in a Howey analysis. Tokens like XRP are traded on crypto exchanges through blind bid-ass transactions between parties who don't know each other, and she concluded the SEC can't just ignore these facts and circumstances like they tried to do in the Ripple case. The judge reviewed all individual sales categories about which the SEC sued Ripple and its two top executives, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson, and the vast majority of them were blind, bid-ass transactions on exchanges. She also acknowledged that thousands of retail XRP holders who submitted affidavits to the court didn't know there was a company named Ripple when they acquired their tokens in those transactions on exchanges. The SEC failed to show how Ripple's public communications about XRP could have reached those buyers to prove the existence of a package of promises that would make XRP an investment contract in Ripple and therefore security. In short, objective facts 
and circumstances in the crypto space provide plenty of legal room for token distributions to not be securities. As SEC Chair Gary Gensler states, Congress did give the commission a broad brush to apply the Howey test, but the Ripple roadmap clarifies it's not so broad that the SEC can make up facts and circumstances that don't exist. It could serve as a template for rules that adapt to the unique needs of crypto asset owners in the same way the SEC has adapted a wealth of rules in the past. Securities lawyers know the commission created new and adapted reg- registration rules for asset-backed securities, variable rate securities, master limited partnerships, and new communication rules for CEO's online delivery and social media communication. The saga of the SEC versus Ripple and its implications for similar enforcement actions is a testament to the resilience of industry players committed to navigating the complex web of regulations. Remember, Ripple was never accused of fraud and they've tried to play by the rules through this entire process. This case, though, invites regulators to recalibrate their approach and align with technological advancements rather than stifle them. It's a call for a regulatory framework that supports innovation ensures market integrity, and fosters the U.S.'s position as a leader in the crypto space. The SEC versus Ripple case offers a lens through which we can re-examine the role of regulation in the digital age. It highlights the importance of a tailored approach to oversight, one that distinguishes between different types of crypto assets, their uses and the facts, and how they're traded. This will enable a regulatory environment that is precise and adaptive rather than one that is overbroad, stifling, and ultimately not following the law, as we've seen with the SEC. So, really interesting piece here, again, by J.W. Verrett, who has, again, talked about this case at length in numerous pieces. But I'll link this one down below because I think it's worth being able to reference back to. And this last one, I'm going to go through pretty quickly. I thought it was interesting, though, that it was in uh, Reuters Legal News talking about the so-called ripple effects developments uh, surrounding this groundbreaking case. Now, a lot of this you've already seen before, we've already discussed, so I won't rehash it, but it's a three-page piece worth a quick glance if you are less familiar with some of the background of the case and also want to hear more about the authors. But just in quick summary here, they're going to recap what happened in the SEC versus Ripple case ruling from Judge Torres, and they'll talk a little bit about how the SEC versus Ripple case differs from the Terraform Labs case. They write, while the Howey test is, as the SEC frequently points out, flexible, it is not limitless. Uh, By seeking to apply it to circumstances it was not designed to address, the SEC appears to test those limits, like we just saw in that article we went through by J.W. Verrett. Now, here's the interesting thing. Although Ripple and Terraform can be reconciled based on important procedural and factual differences, the divergent outcomes outcomes nonetheless inject further uncertainty into an already murky landscape of decisions applying Howey in the digital asset context. So certainly distinct cases, but the way the Howey test has been applied just certainly provides less clarity rather than more. I think the decision from Judge Torres certainly goes to show that the Howey test can't be stretched beyond its limits, but the SEC will continue to try and apply it with a broad brush as they have up to this point. So what's going to happen next? While the Ripple case continues to proceed through its damages phase and potential appeals, other SEC litigations have directly raised the same or similar issues to those decided by Judge Torres. In the Coinbase case, the SEC alleged defendants facilitated the sale of crypto assets through an unregistered exchange. Coinbase moved for judgment on the pleadings arguing secondary sales do not confer any rights against the sellers, a necessary feature of an investment contract, and the SEC overstepped its regulatory power, noting that Gary Gensler's comment that only Congress could confer authority to regulate crypto exchanges certainly applies there. We've got other cases with uh, Binance, Payword, and more still yet to come, but let me know what you think down in the comments. Will the Ripple Uh, decision have an impact on those cases. It certainly has demonstrated that the Howey test is ill-fitted to secondary market transactions and that those secondary transactions aren't really securities transactions. 
But will the SEC continue along that same line of argument or having taken a loss on the Ripple side, will they leave that one aside and try and pursue other options? I hope you found the information here valuable. If you did, drop a like. You know the drill. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.